Good morning. Welcome to Western Hills. We're glad that y'all are here. If you're happy to be here, say amen. amen. All right, I want you to turn to somebody next to you and say, the Lord loves you and so do I. All right, all right. We're uh, we're glad to have uh, have everybody here. Uh, Evan, amazing job, buddy. I had no idea that you were a songwriter. I know we've got a, a Kenny Rogers lookalike in the back with Steve Collins. So uh, Steve's got the beard gro- going on. I love it. So uh, look like the gambler, my friend. Look like the gambler. Got to know when to hold him or when to fold him. But uh, uh, we are glad that y'all are here. Uh, really, really excited about today. Uh, today we're going to begin a series on the, uh, on the 40 days of prayer. And, and we've got to get serious about praying. And in fact, here's our uh, first slide up here. Um, and, and this is our kind of our theme verse for, uh, for our, our 40 days of prayer It comes from John chapter 15, verse 5, and it's on the front page of your bulletin. It says something like this. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. For the next 40 days, we're going to concentrate and focus on prayer. Our church needs to be a place of praise. Amen? Because without prayer, the church is just going to simply fall apart. Without prayer in my life, my life will absolutely crumble into pieces. Prayer is essential. It's foundational to my walk with God. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but, but there are a lot of things that, 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 that seem to get started and they don't finish really well. They kind of fizzle out. And, uh, and we are at that point as a church where there is a, a new beginning. Uh, for me, this past week, I tied up all my loose ends at the gym, turned in all my... All my keys, I don't know, I probably had 35 keys or so. I know Tiffany, you know, I got this big old wad of keys. And I had to turn in all these keys. And, uh, you know, it was tough. Turn in all my gym keys. That's hard to do. Turn in all my van keys. That wasn't very hard to do. Uh, But uh, it's a new beginning. Now, starting fast, starting hard, starting on the good foot is a very important thing to do. And in just a moment, I'm going to put up some slides, some pictures of some products and some things that started off really well, but just kind of fizzled at the end. Here's uh, one product. Maybe you remember this. Uh, The new Coke. Uh, I believe it came out in 1985. If, and I know for some of you, you don't know what the new Coke is. You thought Coke was always Coke. But in 1985, there was a drink that came out by Coca-Cola called the New Coke. If you drank a New Coke, raise your hand. Be honest. Yes, that's about how many people that drank in the entire of America, this New Coke. But uh, New Coke came out in 1985. It was a, uh, from what I understand, it was a reaction to Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi was kind of a, a, a big drink then. It was a, everybody seemed to like that, it seemed to be a little bit sweeter. And so Coca-Cola said, we're going to change things. We're going to come out with a new Coke, and it's going to be sweeter. And uh, it did not last very long. And there's this big conspiracy theory that Coke actually did this on purpose because they came out with a Coca-Cola Classic, and everybody loved Coca-Cola Classic, and then Coke became kind of big. But anyway, so you got the new Coke. kind of didn't work. This is something else. In 1992, Pepsi decided to come out with its own product. They, They called it Crystal Clear Pepsi. How many of you ever had a crystal clear Pepsi? Raise your hand. Anybody in here? All right, just a few of us. Man, we're, we're a bunch of losers, you know. But, uh, but crystal clear Pepsi. Pepsi had this idea of taking their drink, pulling all the color out of it, pulling all the caffeine out of it, and coming up with this crystal clear Pepsi drink. They even had a diet version of it. And uh, it didn't last very long. Uh, it just didn't go, go too well. Uh, another thing, uh, 1996, uh, McDonald's came out with the burger with the grown-up taste, the Arch Deluxe. Uh, don't know if anybody remembers this, but it was, a, it was, it was around in, in 1996. From what I understand, it cost McDonald's $300 million. They lost $300 million on this, and it just kind of just didn't work out. Then I came across this thing. This is called an egg cuber. Supposedly, you could take an egg, 
put it in this device, boil it, and it came out as a square egg. Why in the world would you want a square egg? I have no idea. But this actually was, was, was there. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I, I bet there's probably one or two of you probably have it at your house. I don't know. Uh, uh, I bet, Miss Carolyn, you probably got one of these. I bet John kind of gave you one of these for a Mother's Day gift. So, like you know, those paper plates. So, but uh, a square egg. Why a square egg? Well, it didn't last very long, but you can. You can get on eBay right now. I'll do it right now while I'm preaching. But you can get on eBay and actually buy an egg cuber. So uh, these are products that just kind of started and then just kind of fizzled. Uh, just a few more. This is a unique item. This is for the man that is blessed with hair on the sides, on the back, and nothing on top. Uh, this was a brush that had a scalp polisher, if you can see it. There's a scalp polisher and then a brush on the side. Uh, so you could take care of your hair, just, ooh, you know. Uh, this happened, I think, in the 1930s. I don't know, that might be a picture of Sonny. Is that, where's Sonny at? But, uh, uh, or Frank, Frank, is that you? But, uh, but anyway, so this brush came out. They thought it was going to be the coolest thing. You could polish your scalp and brush your hair at the same time. Did not last. Last one, this is without a doubt, uh, the most unique product, I think, that I have ever seen in my life. This is a doozy. Uh, it was, this actually came out in the 1920s. It actually came out in 19, about 1915, 1916 in France and came over to the United States. Everything happens in France and comes over here. Came over here in 1922. The United States of America gave this a patent. This was a baby cage that you could attach to your apartment window. And uh, the caption is, need more room? And they, <laughs> you would have a cage attached to your apartment window. You could put your baby in the cage. Uh, you could tell he's really excited about that. Uh, this did not last very long. However, I do think it could have lasted a little bit longer if it was a husband cage. Amen, women? I mean, if you could stick your husbands in there. Uh, I know Roberta's looking at Jimmy. <laughs> I'd love to put you in there. Uh, you know, this could have actually uh, been big, but can you imagine uh, these products? Uh, baby cages, square eggs, scalp polishers. All these things kind of started off and didn't end up very well. Well, today, today we're going to begin a journey for the next 40 days as a church. And we're going to pray for 40 days. For 40 days, we're going to pray. Because I just think it's just essential. If we're going to do church right, we have got to be people of prayer. You know, doing church right isn't about committees. It's not about conferences. It's not about speakers. It's not about having a big education. It's not even about having potluck meals. If Western Hills is going to be the place that it ought to be. It begins and ends with our walk with God. Amen? If, if, if David Estes, if, if David Estes is going to be the man that God created him and called him to be, I have to bathe myself in prayer. Prayer has got to be essential. Prayer has got to be where I begin. And so we're doing 40 days of prayer. And you're probably wondering, why, why 40? What's, what's the importance of 40? Well, 40 is an important number in the world. For example, I learned this from Chris Tenfinney. At negative 40 degrees is when Fahrenheit and Celsius actually correspond with one another. Negative 40 Fahrenheit, negative 40 Celsius is exactly the same temperature. Uh, another thing about 40, Major League Baseball has a 40-man roster. 40-yard dash is important in football. Uh, there is an interstate called I-40 that stretches all the way from California to North Carolina. It's one of the longest interstates in America. Um, 40 is the number of spaces on a Monopoly game. In music, we always hear about the American Top 40. And then, if you don't think 40 is that important, 40, don't, I didn't know this until, until just this week, 40 is the biggest number, the highest number ever counted to on Sesame Street. 
So if Sesame Street thinks 40 is important, so do we. Um, but the Bible, the Bible is filled with the number 40. In fact, the Bible mentions the number 40 146 times. Now, we could get really bogged down into coming up with some type of symbolism for the number 40. I don't know if it really matters what the number 40 means symbolically, but I do know that in this book, the number 40 is mentioned 146 times. And in several occasions, the number 40 is, is, is kind of connected when, about when God moves and does things. For example, uh, does anybody know how long, uh, how long it rained during the, the flood of Noah? 40 days and 40 nights. Genesis chapter 7. So it's very simple that the, the earth was flooded for 40 days and 40 nights. And after it was flooded and, and Noah was actually able to come to rest on Mount Ararat and, and finally they were able to step out on ground, God cleansed the world after 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, another passage, uh, Moses and Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 34. If you've got your Bibles, you can follow along with us. Exodus chapter 34 says this about 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 34 verse 27, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. It said that he fasted without food or without drink. I mean, I, I can barely go 40 minutes without food. But 40 days, something was big about to happen. He was there 40 days and 40 nights, wrote on tablets of stone, and it became the Ten Commandments. Uh, another instance, Numbers chapter 14. If you've got your Bibles, just flip over there in Numbers chapter 14. This is uh, about the 40 years that the Israelites were going to be, uh, be in the, uh, the wilderness. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 30, Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Jephunneh, son of Nun. As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But you, you, your bodies will fall in this desert. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the desert. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community which is banded together against me. They will meet their end in this desert. Here they will die. For 40 years, the children of Israel wandered in this wilderness. And after the end of the 40 years, God would move, and they would enter into the promised land. Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3 says this, beginning in verse 1, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim, it to, the, proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started.